High on the slope behind me are the ramparts of a Roman fort, one of which perhaps you have never heard, Epiacum. It's not far from the little town of Alston, set just beneath Alston Moor. I don't know what the name of the hill is behind me, but this was a place where a group of Romans, I don't know whether to call them a legion, a cohort, I think they were, of the Nervi, the second Novian cohort, cohort, came and set up camp. This was around about 120 AD, around about the time that Hadrian's Wall was being built a few miles to the north from here, perhaps about 10 or 12 miles to the north. And these Nervi were part of the regular Roman army, although in fact they were not Romans, they were not Roman citizens. They came from a rather wild barbarian tribe from the flatlands of Belgium. And it must have been a shock for them to come here and see there was no flat ground anywhere. It's hills as far as you can see in every direction. Perhaps they even felt a little bit shut in, and that's why they picked this spot high above the valley, and incidentally high above the Maiden Way, a Roman road which ran along, roughly along the line of the modern road from Alston to Carlisle. But let's go up and have a look at the fort, because there's something fascinating about this fort. Boy, I tell you, that's a climb. <sighs> I'm all out of breath. But at last I've reached the eastern side of the Roman fort of Epiacum. And as you would expect, you have here the ramparts, the, the walls, which probably originally were built of turf, though there is plenty of stone lying around that they may have used to reinforce their, their ramparts. Normally, the ramparts of a Roman fort were just a turf wall, perhaps eight or ten feet high. A lot of turf, but still, that's about all it was. And of course, there was somewhere where the turf had come from and earth had come from, so outside the walls there would be a ditch. Now here, a ditch would be rather superfluous because of the steep slope running down. But nonetheless, I don't know whether you can make out behind me, in fact, I'll just go over here and stand on it, there's a distinct ledge running beside the wall. Whether there was a second rampart or wall or obstacle here, I don't know, or whether it was just this where the, the turf came from and that, that's where the wall has slumped down to, I don't know. But it may have been part of the defences. But on the whole, on this side and on the north, there's just the single rampart because that's all you need in such a, a steep hillside. And you can see some idea of how high the rampart is if I come up here and stand on it, and you can see it running up behind me into the distance. This is the eastern rampart of the Fort of Epiacum. And it indicates that these Nervi, the second cohort of the Nervians, was here for a considerable period of time. This wasn't just an overnight camp that they erected. They were here for a number of years in order to make this so big and so uh, robustly defended. What you are looking at is the northern and behind me the western ramparts of this fort of Epiacum. Now normally a Roman fort was shaped like a playing card with, as I said, just a single line of ramparts all the way round. And there would be gates in the north, south, east and west sides. Here, because of the topography, the gates are in slightly different positions, but behind me you may be able to make out the western gate or it may be the Northwestern Gate. A 
Life in a Roman fort was always busy. You know what your grandmother said, Satan finds for idle hands some evil work to do, and that applies to soldiers just as much as it does to small children. And so there's always something going on, drills and exercises and armor polishing and sword sharpening and, and the usual routine of cooking and cleaning and so on. But much of that could not take place within the fort itself because the area of the fort would be filled with the headquarters buildings right in the very middle, the barracks lined up all around it, the cookhouse and, and the forge and all the rest of it that goes to make up the necessary equipment for a Roman cohort. The result was that when the cohort wanted to do its exercises, it had to come outside the camp because there was no room inside. And behind me on the hillside is a flat area of ground that was the parade ground for the Roman Nervian, second Nervian cohort here at Epiacum. In fact, they actually paved it with slabs of stone. And having been up here in the spring when the whole area was a quagmire, I don't blame them. It can't be fun doing your exercises ankle deep in cold Northumbrian mud. But it is also round here that we get our first sight of one of the peculiarities of Epiacum. Let me show you some close-ups. Yes, I kid you not, the Roman fort here in its southeastern corner has four different ramparts. And over here on the southern side, behind me, there are eight lines of ramparts. Not very big, not very deep, but still ramparts. This is very un-Roman. Well, any attacker coming from this direction would have all these ditches and bumps to go over. And I suppose, considering that it's fairly flat ground in this direction, that makes a certain amount of sense. Uh, the Romans didn't usually bother. They were quite confident in their one line of ramparts lined with Roman soldiers with their armor, shields, and swords to keep the enemy off. But here, there are eight, nine rows of ramparts. Why? Why did the Romans make a difference here? Well, of course, one reason could be that the soldiers were here for a long time and their commanders wanted to keep them busy. Remember what I said about idle hands? And so they had these extra ramparts made. But I don't think that is the reason, really, because we know of many other Roman forts in Britain where the soldiers were for much longer than they were here at Epiacum, and they've only got the, the one line of ramparts. Why here? I suggest that the clue lies in the fact that they were Nervi, coming from the flat lands of Belgium, where there were no hills, no mountains, to uh, provide a strong point, and so they were used to surrounding their hill forts, <laughs> call them hill forts, call them forts. They were used to surrounding their forts with line after line of ramparts. So when they came here, what more natural, faced with this gentle slope, than that they should, in their spare moments, add rampart after rampart to make the defenses of their fort more secure. Because don't forget, here, they were in enemy territory, and at any moment, hordes of ravening tribesmen might come rushing down from the hillside, intent on dislodging them and regaining control of Britain. Here on the western side, where the slope is steeper and the valley deeper, they didn't feel the need to be quite so exuberant in their defences, and there's only five rows counting the main ramparts. And down here, I'm on the second, third, fourth, fifth beyond me. Mind you, they are rather larger, deeper, higher. So I can only assume that there was a very real threat. And we do know that round about this time, perhaps a few years before, the Ninth Legion had set up camp only about 
60, 100 miles to the north, and had been completely wiped out by a sudden onrush of tribesmen. Vanished. No more Ninth Legion. And the Nervian cohort was not eager to follow their fate. And so they made sure that they would be safe whatever happened.